Something cool about the Switch and the Free Play CM3, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but if you supply the power from the Switch and you connect your HDMI cable and the USB hub, you can actually drape the cables right over the front of it and the Switch becomes a very cool stand. So this is the Free Play CM3. It's a little kit that puts a Raspberry Pi Compute Module 3 into a Game Boy Advance shell and does a pretty good job. Usually with this kind of project, it starts by making a plan, going online, getting all the parts, waiting for those to come in, and worrying about your audio, your ground loop issues, power, and using that correctly, taking care of your batteries, cooling, controllers, screens, form factor, all of the problems that come up when working on all those things. And um, it's a lot of fun, but there's a lot to, to think about and a lot that can go wrong with it. With this kit, I'm spoiled. It's just all taken care of. Takes care of all that stuff. With a few minor modifications to the case, you're, you're good to go. And then you can do some um, optional sort of upgrading if you want to, like, like I've done. This is my second build, so I was able to do a few uh, things differently. I used the PlayStation Vita analog sticks, which are a very good upgrade. Start and select buttons relocated to make these a bit better. I moved the uh, shoulder buttons from the rear to the top, two rear firing speakers, and I was able to widen up the opening for the screen to use the entire screen instead of having it um, overscanned to fit the original Game Boy screen size. It's much better. Some people they ask, why do you want two analog sticks? Why do you need two analog sticks? There's not a million games for that. And I 
just say because it's awesome. If there was no reason for them, I would still want them just because it's cool. But there are reasons for that. And uh, the first one is there's, there's games that do natively support it, even though there's not that many. PlayStation 1 games, there's a few that do. I'll put some ports on here, like Doom. And, um, and it works really well. I'm about to die because I accidentally put it on super hard difficulty. Oh, you try playing Doom on hard difficulty through a camera. Anyway, a lot of games benefit from just having the additional inputs. Like Nintendo 64 games, uh, a good default for that is just having the C buttons mapped to the right analog stick. Another good reason is you can kind of modernize controls for a lot of games, like Turok on Nintendo 64, the controls were terrible. The C buttons were your move forward and, and move forward and reverse and you strafe left and right. So you can put those, remap those to your left analog stick and then remap what was the left analog stick to the right analog stick to have kind of normal controls that make sense. They're not perfect because of the way it was designed but it's much better. Doesn't hurt your brain to try to play it anymore. And not just using these to sort of like modernize the controls for first person shooters, you can sort of do it for everything. So like dual stick shooters, Super Smash TV on Super Nintendo. It benefits from having an analog stick. So in this game you you fire, it's a top down dual stick shooter, but back then they, they just used the four uh, buttons over here for directions and you had to press two buttons to fire up in the uh, diagonal. So now you can just map them all to this stick and it's much more fun. Good luck. You can get kind of creative with it too. So, something that I like to do, let's say you'd have an arcade game that is meant to be played in portrait orientation. Well, we can do that. So you can kind of like be creative on how you use it. It's a it's another input, you know, it's not a useless thing. You can come up with some cool ways to use it. And it's not like it takes up a lot of extra space or anything like that. It's a little extra work, I guess, to move the speaker around, but it's it's worth it. No. I've always been bad at this game. 
final summation. I really like this thing. It's a Raspberry Pi Compute Module 3 inside of a Game Boy Advance shell. What is not to like about that? It does everything it's supposed to do. You can play games all the way up through and including a lot of PlayStation 1 and Nintendo 64 games. It looks good doing it. It's not too hard to put together. And you can really get in there and customize the software and the hardware to own it and make it yours. That's a very nice thing. I'm trying to think about something bad to say about it, and I, I don't, I can't think of anything. So, thanks for watching. If you want to see how this one was built, I'll put a playlist in the description.